In this video we have a look at how to express numbers which are written in scientific notation back to a form where they're just a normal whole number or sometimes people refer to them as an ordinary number. In this case it's 3.5 times 10 to the 4. Before we do this let's have a look at some other multiplications involving powers of 10. So we've got 8.6 multiplied by 10. Now we know that comes to 86. What we'll also do is express that with a decimal point just so we can see a pattern occurring later on. So 86 becomes 86.0. 9.381 multiplied by 100 is 938.1 and 4.7 multiplied by 1000 is 4700. Again we'll put the point zero or the decimal point at the end so we can again establish a pattern with respect to the multiplication of powers of 10. Now let's change those powers of 10 so they're expressed with indices. So 10 becomes 10 to the 1, 100 becomes 10 squared, and 1000 becomes 10 to the power 3. We should notice a pattern occurring with respect to the indices and the movement of the decimal point. In the first example, we've multiplied by 10 to the power 1, and the decimal point has gone one position to the right. In the second example, we've multiplied by 10 to the power 2, and the decimal point has gone two places to the right. And in the final example, we've multiplied by 10 to the power 3, and the decimal place has moved three positions to the right. Now let's go back to our original example, which was to express 3.5 times 10 to the 4 as an ordinary whole number. So we can see here that the power of 10 is a 4. So the decimal point is going to move four positions to the right. Now we've done this in our answer by adding lots of zeros at the end, so we've got a solution of 35,000. Now let's follow the same logic, but this time multiply by powers of 10 where the powers are negative. So in the first example we've got 3.9 multiplied by 10 to the negative 1. That means the decimal place should move one position, but in this instance to the left. And we can see here in green that the decimal point has moved and in effect overlapped the 3. In the next example we've got 7.11 multiplied by 10 to the negative 2. So our decimal point moves two positions to the left and our solution becomes 0.0711. And finally we need to move the decimal point three places to the left so our answer becomes 0.0052. You'll notice again that all the digits in green indicate the movement to the left of the decimal point. We can also see that in each case the first non-zero digit, the 3, the 7 and the 5 displayed in red are in the position which reflects the power of 10. So the 3 is in the first decimal place, the 7 is in the second decimal place and the 5 is in the third decimal place. Let's try this same process with another example. In this case, 8.5 times 10 to the negative 4. So to express this as an ordinary number, we're going to put the 8, the first non-zero number, in the fourth decimal place position. So our answer becomes 0.00085. We can see here in this example that writing the solution where the power of 10 is negative is quite straightforward. Let's have a look at some other examples using pen and paper. In both of these examples, the power of 10 is positive, so we're going to make larger numbers. In the case of 5.932 multiplied by 10 to the 3, we're going to shift the decimal point three positions to the right. So we put the non-zero digits down, and we move the decimal point slowly, one at a time, until we get to the third spot, and our solution is 5,932. In the next case, we're going to put down the non-zero digits, but we know that because it's a power of 6, we're going to move it two spots and we're basically going to run out of digits. So we'll put down a series of zeros, doesn't matter how many. In this case we'll continue jumping, so it's 3, 4, 5 and 6 decimal places. So our solution becomes 6, 1, 9 and then we've got a further four zeros. So in effect 6 million 190,000. 